a blessed good morning to one and all. We want to welcome you here to our morning devotional service. We want to make sure that you are comfortable and that we are here to lift up God's name. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's all stand as we open in a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this new day. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here this morning to lift your name up. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for life and strength and health that we can come to give you all glory and all praise. Father, we are praying, Lord God, for even those who are viewing at this time, Lord, that their hearts will be blessed and encouraged. We are thankful that we can meet here as a body, Lord God. Father, you are so worthy to be praised because, Father, you have made it possible. And dear God, as we come today, we pray, God, you cleanse and purify our hearts, Lord, so that our worship, Lord God, would be as a sweet, smelling Savior coming up to you this morning. We pray for those who will participate, Lord God. We think, Lord God, of our dear brother Andrew as he will share the word. We pray you give fresh anointing, Lord God. Remember your ministry and song, Lord. And all those, Lord, who will share this morning, we pray that their hearts, Lord God, will be encouraged. Father, you are a great God, an awesome God, and we are giving you thanks and praise. We pray, God, that we will continue to draw closer to you each day even in this time Lord God and in this season Lord where things are so different Lord help us to keep our focus on you Lord God and continue to worship you Lord in the beauty of holiness we give you all praise all thanks and all glory in Jesus name amen praise the Lord this morning we have to lead us in song we're going to invite our dear Sister Clothing to come as we worship in song. Let us lift up our voices and give thanks and praise. A blessed good morning to everyone. Good morning. This morning we want to continue worshiping our Lord and Savior by letting him know how much we appreciate him and how much we love him and he is worthy of all glory and praise. He alone is worthy.
and because he's ready, we can call him our friend. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And we can search the whole world over, and we'll never find a friend like him.
one day he's coming. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. We are glad that we can be here this morning. For those who came in after, a warm, warm welcome. And to you who are viewing, we want to let you know we do appreciate you being here with us this morning. As I said before, this is the day the Lord has made, and we have to rejoice and be glad in it. I am telling you this morning, we have a great privilege that we can praise God and that we can lift up his name this morning. And don't be scared to worship. Just praise God because our God is a great and mighty God. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you for being in the presence of the Lord this morning despite circumstances around us. At this time we are going to have our Bible reading and it is taken from St. Luke chapter 10 and I'm reading from 30 to 37. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levi, when he was at the place, he came and looked on him and passed him on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went into him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pieces, two, two pence, and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendeth more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three men thinkest thou was neighbors unto him that fell among the teeth. And he said, He that showeth mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. We yes. have to minister to us at this time, our dear deacon Andrew Giddens, and as he comes to us, we pray you give him your undivided attention. But make me the privilege to wish each and every one of you gathered here this morning a blessed and wonderful good morning to you. May that, that greetings also be extended to those of you joining us on the various platforms, Facebook, YouTube. We welcome your presence this morning. Amen and amen. It is also an honor to be able to greet you in the name of God Almighty. Father of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, may his grace and his peace be with us always. Amen, amen. and amen. Recent times have been a great teacher to all of us. And, and I trust we have been paying close attention to the lessons it has taught. Hmm? Because we've been exposed to a way of life we never imagined or fathom. You know, we, we, we never envisioned that we would be denied entry to an establishment because we're not wearing a mask. Usually it's the other way around. But that's the kind of life and the, the normal times that we've been asked to exist under. But one of the key lessons that was taught in recent times is that it has showed up many of us as to who we truly are. When the rubber met the road, some, some vivid colors were exposed. There were certain questions that were asked and the answer that came back 
exposed traits that weren't visible before. The word of God speaks to an individual who was asked a specific question and his response left a lot to be desired as well. That same question is one of the oldest questions asked. Yet today it is still relevant. And that question forms the basis of this message being presented to you this morning. Brothers and sisters, I humbly present under the question, am I keeping my brother? Am I keeping my brother? Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as the true and the living God. You are the supreme being, dear Lord. And we are your people, your creation, dear Lord. And we are so grateful that you are speaking to us. Father, right now we accept your instructions, your direction, and your guidance, dear Lord. Father, let's word go forward. We're thanking you for the good soil that it will fall upon. May it take root, dear Lord, and bring forth much fruit. I commit myself into your hands, Almighty God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. We, we, we had a text read just before it came, Luke 10. Um, I'm going to extract one verse from, from, from that. And that is verse 30. I won't read it again before I already had it. But I want to add another text. And this text comes from Genesis 4, 9. Genesis 4, 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? That's the key question there. Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Now, Luke 10 is a well-studied text. One of those well-studied texts. In the first, verse 30, as you read it, it's all about the parable of the Good Samaritan. And at verse 30, Jesus is beginning his response to an attorney, to, to a lawyer, who was trying to be smart. He, he tried to come with logic. And Jesus was about to illustrate to him about how one should have love, or who actually displays love for one's neighbor. Now this same parable can help us answer this question this morning. Am I keeping my brother? Because they tell you the truth. Your neighbor is your brother. Your neighbor is your brother. And the entire account, as recorded by you, gives the circumstances surrounding this certain man who was violently beaten, stripped of his clothing, robbed, and left to die at the side of the road. And then you heard about three individuals. There was a priest, a Levite, and of course the same Samaritan. And Jesus would vividly describe how each man responded to the plight of this certain man. And then we have Cain. And that question that God asked him as the whereabouts of his brother. And Cain responded with a statement, I do not know. Then he had a question for God. Am I my brother's keeper? Now the two, two individuals, individuals in that parable could identify with Cain's response. If God was to ask them, where is your brother? They have no choice but to respond likewise. They left them on the side of the road to die. Surely they were not keeping their brother. Are we our brother's keeper? 
am I keeping my brother is a question that we should be asking ourselves. Because it relates directly as to how we view our neighbor and how we respond to his play. Hmm? Only the Samaritan can truly respond in a positive way. Only the Samaritan could have given a good report of his brother. Hmm? Because he kept him. He kept his brother. You know, as we go through this sermon this morning, I want us to be constantly asking ourselves this question. Am I keeping my brother? And if we can't respond in the same manner as the Samaritan, then there's some things we ought to change. There's some things we ought to reverse and turn around. There may be some attributes that we need to develop that this Samaritan displayed. And these attributes were clear and vivid as he responded to the plight of this certain man who he did not know, never met him before. But here was a man in critical condition, being robbed, left for dead. Critical condition. And that situation is indicative of any one of us falling on hard times. It can be likened and compared to us going through difficulties. Because you know in your heart, calamity can strike at any moment. If you don't mean you can feel free to ask Joe, he will tell you all about calamities. Because today you're rich and things are going well, but tomorrow you've lost it all and you're poor and destitute. One moment you're happy, you're hearty, and you're healthy, and the next moment you're weak, you're wobbly, and you're woeful. Conditions change like the weather. And right now you may be aware of someone who's weak, wobbly, woeful. You may know of someone close to you who's poor, destitute, they're not fearing well, hard times. How have you responded to them? What have we done to help them? We're gonna look at the response of the Samaritan. We want to see what he did at the core to help this certain man who was left for dead. And as we go through these attributes, I, I want to I want us maybe search internally. Those here and those, those, those on the bed. Let's search internally. Let's look for these attributes. And if they be lacking, let us add them this morning. Let not another hour go by unless we start to reverse the situation. The first attribute I saw, and let's extract verse 33. But the servant of Martin, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. That's the first attribute. He had compassion. Compassion is a sympathetic consciousness hmm, of the distress of another with a desire to alleviate it. You can see this in the Samaritan, clearly. But sadly, this is, this compassion seems to be in decline. Because here's a man in distress. Hmm, but this Samaritan was sensitive to his plight. Hmm? He identified with his suffering. He had compassion on him. Hmm? The priest, he had no compassion. The Levite, he had no compassion. They were, they were willing to, but they, they felt nothing. They crossed.
one suffer on the other side and went about their business. They ignore the man in distress. This morning is full of questions. I don't want us to ask a question right now. Which category do I fall under? Because we cannot keep it our brother if we don't have compassion. We cannot be our brother's keeper if we lack compassion. We cannot be our brother's keeper if we are willing to leave him on his side of the road to die. If we are willing to leave him in the same condition that we have found him in. We know he lacked and we want to leave him lacking. Compassion dictates that we respond with help and assistance to anyone who is in distress. Anyone who is going through a difficult period, anyone who has a genuine need. Compassion ignores faults and blame. This emergency they say, what are you doing on this road by yourself? You have no business out here. You should be home. He didn't try to lay a blame. He didn't say you did it to yourself. He didn't say your actions brought you here. He never said those things. And usually this is how we respond. Serve the right. What were you carrying a weapon? What did you leave for with all that money? But the response to the Samaritan was very similar to how God responds to us. Huh? Yes. If even you read the word of God, Jesus Christ was moved with compassion. Yes. Huh? He was moved with compassion and he healed them. He didn't ask them how to get sick. I know a lot of people have asked that question. Look, you know he was coughing, why did you go there? He was moved with compassion and he fed them because they were hungry. He was moved with compassion and he helped them. Jesus alleviated their distress. This is the example has been set by our commander in chief. Have we been ignoring the plight of those around us? Have, have we been belittling the conditions that they are living under? Huh? 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 Have we been scoffing at their sufferings? Huh? If we've been doing this, I tell you the truth this morning, brother, that we have not been keeping our brother. Huh? If that's what we have been doing, we are not our brother's keeper. And then we've got some work to do. I want to remind you this morning that each and every one of us are called children of God on the foundation of compassion. He had compassion for us, so he went and he died for us. Right now, wherever you are, Jesus will move on compassion on your behalf. And he's still doing it today. And every time we fall short, he intercedes. Oh, Father, have mercy on him. You know not what he's doing. It's because he doesn't want to see us lost. That one sheep he went out, that shepherd went out to find that one sheep. Compassion. Without it, we can never, never be our brother's keeper. And if we don't have it this morning, let's get on the path of developing it right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Second attribute. Verse 34. The first part of verse 34. Four words. And went to him. That's it. He went to him. 
You see, the Samaritan needed to understand what the needs were of this man. He never assumed anything. He needed to find out what he could do to ease the situation. By physically going over there, this Samaritan showed concern for him. Concern. What a tragedy that those, that that priest and that Levite had more concern for this man. They couldn't be bothered with him. Hmm? We've got no time for you. Concern speaks to a genuine interest that is exhibited in relation to the sufferings of another. And it follows on the heels of compassion. If you have compassion, you will show concern. It's a natural order of things. Just as two follow ones. Another question. Are we concerned for each other? Are we concerned about each other? Too often there's not enough concern among us. And they tell you the truth again. That call of concern goes a long way to brighten somebody's day. That how you doing for a call. I just call to see how you're doing, my brother. Oh, somebody's waiting on it. Somebody's waiting to hear your voice on the other end of the line. That basket of goodies that you're gonna drop off for somebody at some point in time, well, that is just what the doctor needed in order for them. It makes their condition just a little better. You don't have, you have no idea how much they needed it. They may not tell you. They may say just a thank you, appreciate it. But it's the difference between a meal today and I'm going hungry. Concern. Concern moves just to action. When you have concern, you want to do something about the situation. Yeah. I'll say it again. We cannot be our brother's keeper if we have no concern for each other. Oh, we can't be bothered with him. I don't have the time to deal with that matter. Let somebody else deal with it. We get so wrapped up in ourselves that we make no time for no one else. And we forget that today is you and tomorrow it is me. Because at some point in time, I, me, you, may be the person that needs to be kept by his brother. The Samaritan showed concern and he took time from his journey. He was on his way somewhere. Maybe he was going to Jerusalem or you know, he was on his way somewhere and he disrupted his journey to make time for a brother who was in distress. I have no time for you. I, I, I'm on my own mission and it will not be distracted. Final absolute. We're going to continue with verse 34. We're going to end up verse 35. And he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And he set him on his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day he departed, he took out two denarii, gave it to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of it. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So we had compassion on this man, this certain man. He showed concern for him. And this Samaritan ensured that he completed the trilogy. Huh? He provided care. Seeds, compassion, 
concern and care. This Samaritan, this good Samaritan, did what he had to do to help get this certain man back on his feet. He did what he had to do to ensure that this man can survive. He would, this man wasn't able to help himself. And often we find people in this position, people for some all intents and purposes, they just can't seem to get it together. It happens, this is part of life. He bound up his wounds. He had no sanitizer back then, so he used his wine. Sanitizing those wounds, antiseptic. And then he poured on oil to soothe. He brought comfort to an ailing man at the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Set him on his beast and took him to an inn. Of course, there were no hospitals around that time. Mm -hmm. He ensured that this certain man, that his needs were met. To provide care means you are willing to do the things that are needed to worse someone who's in distress. You are, you are prepared to improve their conditions, to help them. Again, the priest and the Levite, oh, they couldn't care less. Oh, they did not care. Huh? They weren't willing to assist. They just didn't care. Let him die. Another question. Where do we stand on these two matters? Are we going to leave it today or are we going to provide care? And I want to pay close attention here because this is important. This is very important. He attended to his needs. Hmm? The needs of the man, not the wants. We serve a God who assures us that he will supply all our needs. Sometimes we confuse them, you know, the wants God deal with in a different matter and a different forum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we misrepresent them because when we want something and God says no, then we get our bottom. But he never promised. Your, your wants, you may hear, but your needs, he will always make available. Whatever you need, he'll ensure you have it at the time that you need it. The good Samaritan, with the compassion, and the concern, and the care, all these put together, prove that this man was indeed his brother's keeper. We often say, oh, God will provide. I don't have to worry about him because God will provide for him. But God wants to use you as that agent of provision. How available are we right now to God that he can use us as an agent of provision in the life of someone he wants to impact? Are we too busy? We don't have the time? We have more compassion. Am I keeping my brother? It's one of those introspective questions. It's, it's one of those questions that we cannot ignore. And, and, and we sometimes, many persons have been asked this question. Are you your brother's keeper? Are we looking out for each other in these hard times? That person who's unable to get to the grocery store. Hmm? Have the bills paid when we could not move around as freely as we wanted to? Did we keep our brother? Did we ensure that each and every one of us were taken care of? This is a question that is even more relevant today. 
It's an old question. And I hope and pray that we can provide an honest answer to ourselves. An honest answer. Because which side of this question are we falling on? Our response to the difficulties and challenges and hardships of each other in these testing times proves whether or not we are indeed our brother's keeper. And at the end of the day, when God asks us, where is your brother? Which response can we give him? Are we going to be like the priest, the Levite, and the king? Well, I do not know. I left him on the side of the road. I don't know if he's still breathing. I left him there. Are we going to respond like the Samaritan? Oh, I took care of him. He's good. I can tell you this morning, he's back at work, he's healthy, he's hearty, he's happy. It's either you did take care of him or you didn't. There's no gray, it's either black or white. Pardon the pun at these times. But it's, it's, it's either you left him on the side of the road or you had compassion, you showed concern, and you took care of him. Where is your brother? Where is your brother this morning? How can you respond right now? Look, you weren't created to exist alone. You, you often hear me saying that no man is an island and at some point in time you will need somebody. You didn't get to where you are now on your own. God used somebody as an agent of this provision to help you get here. God used somebody to open a door for you. To make a way, to give you an opportunity. And the same way your brother will need you today, if you take care of him, when you need him, maybe he will take care of you too. But if you leave him on the side of the road to die, then you're alone. But brothers and sisters, I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's body. Eh? Come on, stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. And I pray that you agree with me that we are indeed all a part of God's body. I remember I said earlier, it is his will that every need, every need, will be supplied. You know this song, you are important to me. I need you to survive. Your brother needs you this morning. Our worship leader is gonna come and, and lead us as we sing that song. I need you, you need me.
deepen my brother this morning the question is posed to you are you keeping your brother are you showing compassion are you showing concern are you caring and these are questions that we can ponder within us and answer them truthfully and if we are not there then we need to get there we are our brother's keeper and we must make sure that we are showing compassion concern and care you know in this time there are those around us who are unable to maintain themselves we as god's children we have to make sure that we are showing compassion, concern, and care because that is our mandate as children of God. We want to thank our dear brother Andrew for sharing the word with us, reminding us of the importance of being our brother's keeper. We pray that as you go away from here, that you would keep these questions and ponder them and truthfully answer them. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We pray, God, that as we listen, Lord God, that we would do self-examination, Lord. We pray, God, that you would help us to be where you want us to be, to be our brother's keeper, to make sure, Lord God, that we are showing compassion in our daily lives, Lord. To make sure, Lord God, that we are caring, Lord. And Father, we pray that as we continue, Lord God, that you will help us to be concerned, Lord, and to go into action wherever possible, to reach out to those, Lord God, who really need our help, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, for showing compassion to us, Lord God. God. You did that when you sent your son, Lord Jesus, into this world. And we pray, Lord God, that people within our hearing of our voices this morning, that they will realize, Lord God, they have a commitment to you, Lord God, to give their lives to you, Lord Father, because you first show compassion and care and concern, Lord, for us, Lord. Father, we commit, Lord God, each and every one of us here today in your care. We pray, of God, you continue to help us to follow your will, to focus on your truth, Lord. Father, we pray that those who do not know you as a Savior, Lord, would even from this message realize, Lord God, that you were there for them, Lord. You sent your son on the cross to die for their sins, Lord. You showed compassion, you were concerned, and you cared, Lord. You made a way, a better way for us, Lord. So into your hands I commit each and every one today. We pray, God, you continue to draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We want to thank one and all for being here today. We know that you have enjoyed being in the presence of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there is always fullness of joy. So we know that you have learned something today and we know that you have enjoyed yourself. We want to thank our ushers, we want to thank our ministering servant, and we want to thank all those who participated, our musician, our worship leader, and we pray that God will continue to bless you richly for being here today. Continue to enjoy the rest of your day. May God bless you and keep you. Let's all repeat the benediction. May the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a wonderful day.